Hi, I'm John Martin, and I am going to show you the new product that we've developed. It's called the Arc 5 Infinity. Arc 5 Infinity has a continuous rotating torch that uh, has endless rotation uh, with slip rings to carry all the uh, electrical signals to the welding torch, as well as the gas and water. Uh, the water is used for the coolant internal to the torch. Uh, we've taken this technology from uh, our previous rotor head machines uh, like the ARC-6 as well as the ARC-5i. And what we've done is we've incorporated it into a robot. And so the robot has replaced the standard column and boom manipulator. And the controller that we de developed is moving the robot in an X, Y, and Z motion. It's coordinated with the rotation of the rotary head, so we can make circle uh, shapes as well as straight linear moves uh, and weld racetracks or any uh, bore similar to our ARC-5i uh, cladding system. So we control this machine much like our other uh, cladding equipment with a wireless or wired pendant here. Um, and we have jogging controls and any uh, overrides of the welding process um, that is, is typical to our other cladding systems. Uh, right now I put it into a Z-axis mode where we can just jog the uh, torch out of the part. And then I can show you a little bit more of the motions of the machine. Uh, what I can do is put the mode into a X, Y, and Z motion. So now you see the entire robot is moving that torch um, across the XY plane. So most of the times you'll use this to position the torch. Um, so instead of using a robot pendant or anything like that, it's all tied into these controls of the machine. So I can bring it down to there. I can bring it back down into this bore here uh, to set up on a racetrack or whatever other shape you might have on there for your cladding process. Uh, I can rotate just the torch itself. So this is no robot motion, only the welding torch. And then I can, uh, let's raise it back up here. I can put it in a rotation diameter mode. Right now it's rotating a six inch circle. I'll change that circle to about 15 inches. And I'll rotate and it's coordinating a 15 inch circle with the robot arm movement as well as the rotary head. Um, I can increase and decrease that radius. So as I decrease the radius, it's show now about five inches and now we're rotating around a five inch circle. And then I can stop here and go back out to a larger radius. Let me show you uh, a few of the motions that are possible with this machine. Um, we can put the modes in several different selections. One of them would be the X and Y direction. So with this joystick, I can control the robot motion and torch motion in the X and Y axis. So I can move it linearly closer and away from me as well as in the Y direction to my right or left. This is used more to position the torch into whatever uh, shape I'll be cladding. So for this example into the cylinder there, I would change the mode selection to the Z axis and then I'll move the torch down into the bore. Now once I'm in a bore, I'll typically use a rotation axis. So right now I'm increasing the radius until it hits the part and it will perform a touch work where it will sense that it, the tungsten has hit the part and retract a certain distance. And I know this is about a six inch diameter so I'll change the diameter here to six. And then I can rotate around that until it hits the wall a few times. And I can make a circle inside of that bore. 
Now you notice that the circle's not exactly centered. So what I can do, once I know the torch can rotate within that bore, I'll go to the point that it's the closest. And I will teach that point where the tungsten makes contact with the part. I'll record that point. I'll rotate over to the next point, bring the tungsten out to the part until it makes contact with it. I'll record that point, and I'll do this two more times. It doesn't really matter where at in the board, just as long as they're separated by some distance. Because what we're doing is uh, calculating the center point off of all these top positions. And that part there will work. And then we'll save this as a center. And now when I rotate around, it has calculated the center of that part. And it follows the part around. So a little bit larger diameters, it has the center of that part hot. And I can increase my diameter out to uh, say about 20 inches. And then when I go to a rotate around that diameter, you see it's still centered on my uh, part center, but rotating at a larger diameter. We can save center points. So if you have different fixturing set up and you wanna uh, put the parts and center them on a particular location, you can save that center point. So it just quickly loads it in and uh, you can uh, jog your torch over to that that shape and start cladding without going through a centering routine. So now I'll go through on how to uh, set up a program for uh, a shape like this. Uh, some people call it a ram bore or a racetrack. Um, it's basically five top points that we have to bring the torch down to uh, and record in the computer. Uh, so it will calculate the positions of the robot. Uh, so first thing is I'll bring uh, my torch out to the straight surface of the racetrack shape. And I'll uh, just try to get the tungsten as uh, perpendicular to the surface as possible. And I wanna make sure that it's on that straight section. And I'll use the, uh, the touch off to touch off so it's always a consistent distance away from the part. And that's point one, and I will teach that part. So we record the X and Y positions of that, part, that point. And now I'll come over to the second point, which is still on this straight section. And we can put this part anywhere. It doesn't have to be lined up with any axis in particular, uh, because with these two points, it establishes where that part is referenced on the X, Y plane. So I'll teach that second point, and then I will rotate my torch around for the third point. And the third point is right at the apex of that uh, radius half circle move. And again, I'll use the X, Y mode to position the torch into that apex and then touch off of it and report uh, teach that as point three. Point four is going to be on the 
opposite side straight section uh, anywhere on that surface. Again, I'll rotate the torch as close to perpendicular as possible. Uh, it's not totally important that it's exactly right because it uses the TCP of the tungsten to uh, calculate that position. We'll teach point four. And then point five is on the opposite wall. <coughs> or sorry, the opposite uh, half circle. And again, the same thing, we wanna get as close to the apex of that circle as possible. just let it touch off of that final point okay and I'll teach that oh, I, look, you can see here there's the points the five points that we taught the XY positions of those points and the shape that it uh, drew based upon those positions so we can see that that shape is very similar to what we're actually welding so we're good to test it we have just programmed the part now we're getting ready to dry run it to make sure that the torch follows it i've turned the arc off and then the machine to run and the torch will reposition and then move down to the zero point of the weld which is right in the middle of the first straight section that we programmed and it's doing this all automatically where it will go down to the position that it calculated and touch off the part uh, to make sure that it has the correct distance for starting the arc and then start the motion around this part. So right there, uh, if the arc was on, it would have started welding. Uh, but right now we're just verifying that it follows the correct path. So it stopped the linear motion and now the uh, rotation is starting. It knows the radius of this shape from the top points and so the rotary head and the robot are coordinate coordinating that radius all right that's made it all the way around so we're good to uh, put the machine into stock and we'll enable the welding and the wire and weld around this part Okay, we've programmed the port part, we've uh, dry ran the part, now we have enabled the welding, and uh, we'll hit the run button, so that the machine will go clad this surface. <laughs> 